So now in this video, we're going to be using the AND gate. So I'm only going to be using one of these AND gates, but this integrated circuit has four AND gates. So it's known as a quad AND gate. It has 14 pins. Two of the pins power it, so pin 7, working your way down there. There's a divot at the top there. That goes to the negative rail, and then pin number 14 goes to the positive rail. That is to power it. And so, as I said before, we're going to use this one. The output is the second pin up, and then there's two inputs above that. So I'm using the 7408 right there. It's the high power CMOS version, 74HC08. And it also has an N after it, but uh, that's not important in this video. So, in any case, as I said before, it is an AND gate. I have the power on and both jumpers and the rail there. So we have five volts applied to the integrated circuit right now. You can see the output's on. No current is flowing because nothing's going on. We are going to take a resistor here and we're just going to do this for a visual. So I'm going to the output, the uh, second pin down and we don't need the uh, power supply. We can we can see that there. So second pin down, I added that resistor. I'm going to grab a blue LED, put it over here and then we're just going to take another resistor in series and put that to the negative rail. And uh, interestingly enough, the output is uh, either on or oscillating on and off. But in uh, any case, there we go. We have the output and that is wired up. This white jumper does not go to anything at the moment. So as you can see, two pins above there are the inputs. So let's zoom in and take a look at that. So to begin with, I have just some jumper wires and I'm going to uh, take this one. For the output to be high, we need both inputs to be high. And so, for this LED to be on, since that resistor goes to the negative rail, we have to give a high signal to both inputs. And it's oscillating, it's probably picking up uh, stray signals, but I just short circuited there. There we go. We're going to one of the inputs, the output went off. So there you can see three pins up right there. Should be uh, pretty easy to see. That's one of the uh, inputs. And we're going to take the other input again, put this jumper to the negative rail, and then go up one more pin right there. So now both of the inputs are low. They both go to the negative rail, and so we're fully off. We need a high signal to uh, both of them, or stray signals, of course. And there is the truth table. You can see that. If one or both of the inputs are low, then the output is going to be low. We need both inputs high. So I'm going to jump this over. And the inputs don't allow any real current to go into them to uh, speak of. There's a little bit of leakage. But in uh, any case, there we go. And uh, you can see if we leave it floating, it's in the LED is about half as bright. So it's probably turning on and off about uh, an even amount of time that will keep it about half the brightness level. But there you can see both inputs are at the positive rail. We have a high output right there. So pretty simple for an AND gate. Now we don't have to rely on just jumpers for this. So I have a push button switch here and I'm going to put the top to the positive rail there. It's always connected across the top and it's always connected across the bottom. It's separated top to bottom. And so we have the positive there. And uh, let's leave this one to the positive. You can see here we have the stray signal. So when I press the button, it gets brighter. So we're picking up uh, stray signals. I'm going to take a 10 kilo ohm resistor. This is a 10,000 ohm resistor. Let's zoom in to uh, see a little bit better. What I'm going to do with this resistor is go to the negative rail right there now you see the output goes off that's because we have a connection from the uh, negative rail now to that lower input input B down there and so it's holding it negative that's held positive until we press the switch so that's how we would use a switch to control one of the inputs now we're gonna add 
a more interesting way to control that top input. And to do that, we're going to zoom back, and you can see I have a light dependent resistor right here. So its resistance depends on how much light is falling on it. And by the way, this is the AND gate schematic symbol. So a lot of times you'll use an, a logic gate schematic symbol to indicate circuitry. The, the main thing is, if it's an AND gate schematic symbol, you know that a high input at both of the inputs will lead to a high output. Otherwise, the output is low. The exact circuitry to do that, for the most part, doesn't matter too much. Maybe it will affect your circuitry a bit. This is high uh, speed CMOS, this particular one. But uh, for now, we're going to ignore that. Just realize integrated circuits with uh, different letters on there. There's also LS for low power shock key. May react a little bit differently in the same circuit. But in uh, any case, the basic rules of the AND gate is what we're looking at in this video. So we're going to yank this jumper here. We are going to take the, let's take a 10 kilo ohm resistor first. And so now we're going up two rows. We're going to put the resistor to the negative rail. And then above the white jumper there, we're going to plug that resistor from the uh, negative rail to the input, input A up there. We're going to take the light dependent resistor. So the resistance of the light dependent resistor changes based on how much light is falling on it. So right now we have enough light where it's going to have a relatively low resistance in relationship to that resistor we just placed. So there you can see we're putting it to the same row right there at the input, but power supply, 10 kilo ohm resistors go in there. The LED is going there. So now if I zoom back, we should see when I press the button, now the output goes high. So right now we have a high signal there and we have the button. So I'm going to hold the button. I'm not going to move. Hopefully the camera will adjust lighting pretty well and it is. There you can see once it gets dark enough now, then the LED goes off right there. So, so we have a light sensor here now. So maybe we don't want that LED to come on for whatever reason if it's dark and uh, so we got the high signal there but uh, we make it dark doesn't matter how much I press the button okay and that's kind of odd because normally you want light when it is dark so what we're gonna do now is uh, just pull the uh, light dependent resistor for a second and replace it with the 10 kilo ohm resistor making sure we go to that output there and I'm leaving a little gap there for the light dependent resistor and we don't want to put the pins at in at an angle I had to kind of close them a little bit but there now we're putting the light dependent resistor on the more negative side of the circuit so when it's brighter it's gonna have less resistance it's gonna hold the voltage closer to zero volts right there and when it gets darker, its resistance will go way up. I measured the resistance earlier. When it's about this dark, we have about about 100,000, a little more than 100,000 ohms of resistance across that uh, resistor. But now, if we press the button, the output does not go high. But if I hold the uh, button down, close the lid, you can see once it gets dark enough, then the output goes high. So right now, we holding a high signal with the switch but we have a low signal with the light dependent resistor so we have a low output we can also have it low on both of them but there we have it low there high there and once it gets dark enough there you can see that uh, as long as it stays dark enough the uh, output there and if I put my finger that helps but uh, the output is being held high right now because the light dependent resistors to the negative rail more current can flow through that resistor pulling up the voltage at the output and uh, so it's easier for current to flow I should say through that resistor than the light dependent resistor that pulls up the voltage in that case now also I have this other LED here I'm going to wire it up the opposite direction of that LED so this is a little bizarre what I'm doing right now but right now 
it's off the outputs low and this second resistor that is in series with uh, that resistor now the two LEDs in that resistor is to the negative rail so we have a negative voltage at the output the uh, second to the top pin there and a negative voltage on the other side of the load and as I said before the output goes high the blue LED will light up right there so what we're going to do we're going to pull that resistor put it to the positive uh, row right there now you can see the green LED is lit up that's because it's wired in the opposite direction the blue LED was not lit up even when I had it over here and the reason why now the green LED is lit up is because the output is negative and uh, so if this resistor is to the positive rail and I don't miss the row that the LEDs are on we got positive there through the green LED the resistor and the output right there currents going in the opposite direction and so that's why I kind of put that resistor there it's a little easier to swap out than jumpers and whatnot basically that's a one kilo ohm that's a one kilo ohm we have the diode drop of the LEDs and then 2000 ohms of resistance setting the current but in any case you don't have to go through the load to the negative rail you can go through the load to the positive rail or if you want to think of it the other way the positive rail going uh, through the load and then to the output however you want to think about it but uh, in any case that's really about all I prepared for this video there's a number of things you can do with the AND gate right there you can take sensors and in this case all sensors have to be high for the output to be high and uh, so there's a lot you can do with it but in any case hopefully you found the video interesting Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.